Today we're going to finish up chapter 14. This is the last section of this chapter, and it's a pretty short section. Um, this section is all about catalysts. So catalysts are substances that affect the rate of a reaction without being consumed. So if you've taken biology, you probably have seen some examples of catalysts, and we'll talk about biological examples in a bit. But a catalyst works by providing an alternative mechanism for the reaction with a lower activation energy. So that's the really key part. If we can lower the activation energy for a reaction, that means that more molecules can actually get to the transition state or become the activated complex. And then that gives us more product. So catalysts are typically a good thing at least for chemists, um, and catalysts are consumed in an early step of a reaction mechanism, and then they're reproduced in a later step. So catalysts, in that sense, can be used over and over and over again. Now, down below, we have an example of a reaction with a catalyst that's actually a negative. Um, so our ozone layer in our atmosphere is really important. It helps kind of stabilize uh, how hot or cold the earth is. Um, and ozone can break down naturally by reacting with oxygen atoms to produce two oxygen molecules. Now, this is a really slow reaction and uh, that's because it has a really high activation energy. However, a catalyst for this reaction is chlorine. So chlorine can react with ozone to produce one molecule of oxygen plus chlorine oxide. And this is really fast because the activation energy is much lower. Then that chlorine oxide molecule can react with an oxygen atom to produce an oxygen molecule and chlorine. So you'll notice that the catalyst is regenerated at the end. So this is a two-step process, but this does occur much faster than our regular breakdown of ozone. Now this is a negative because we don't want ozone to break down. Um, the chlorine actually comes from what are called chlorofluorocarbons that used to be present in refrigeration systems and some air conditioning systems. Um, and once scientists realized that chlorofluorocarbons were causing the ozone layer to break down, uh, companies stopped producing um, you know, refrigerators that contained these chlorofluorocarbons. So, we have since reduced the amount of chlorofluorocarbon emissions. Um, and so the ozone layer has repaired itself a bit, but we still have a ways to go. So here's the energy diagram for catalyzed and uncatalyzed pathways. So you'll notice we have our reactants and if they're just by themselves, the activation energy is quite high. So this reaction is really, really slow because it takes a lot of energy for those two reactants to get over that activation uh, energy. But if we have chlorine present as our catalyst, that decreases the activation energy quite a bit. So that's going to allow for the breakdown of ozone uh, and that's going to be much easier to do. Now the products are the same in both situations and we're just reproducing the catalyst in our catalyzed pathway. So there are two different types of catalysts. Um, there's heterogeneous catalysts, which are in a different phase from the reactant particles. So for instance, um, in our atmosphere, chlorine can be trapped in solid ice crystals um, because, for instance, over Antarctica, the air is really cold. Um, so if chlorine's trapped in a crystal, then it's in the solid state, and that's different from ozone, which is in the gas state. 
Now, a solid catalyst or a heterogeneous catalyst will hold one reactant molecule in proper orientation for a reaction to occur when the collision takes place. And sometimes this helps to start breaking bonds. So that's going to lower the activation energy. And then homogeneous catalysts are in the same phase as the reactant particles. And uh, so for instance, if chlorine is in the gas state and ozone is in the gas state, then we would consider chlorine to be our homogeneous catalyst. So homogeneous catalysts react with one of the reactant molecules to form a more stable activated complex with a lower activation energy. So these are two different ways that we could speed up a reaction. We could use a heterogeneous catalyst or a homogeneous catalyst. It just kind of depends on the reaction and what works better. So here are a couple of visuals for these two types of catalysts. So on the left, we have, again, a homogeneous catal uh, catalyst. So that's shown in yellow. And it's in the same phase as the reactants, which are blue. And then the products are red. And then on the right-hand side, we have a heterogeneous catalyst. So you can see the catalyst is a solid whereas the reactants and the products are gases. So an example of a heterogeneous catalyst um, is the hydrogenation of ethane. Um, ethane, well, ethene is a molecule with a double bond. And if you can add hydrogen H2 to that, you end up with a single bond. And this is a, a reaction that is really difficult to perform under normal circumstances because hydrogen has a really strong bond. So it's hard to break up those atoms. But additionally, you kind of need the hydrogens to be positioned in a particular way in order to add to the carbons. So what we can use to speed up or um, uh, help this reaction along, we can use either platinum, palladium, or nickel as our solid catalyst. So what ends up happening is ethene will uh, bind to this catalyst and then hydrogen will as well. And then that helps the hydrogen molecules break apart. And they can actually move across the surface of this catalyst. And they'll end up where they need to be in order to react with ethene. So eventually, we're left with our product that we want. And it can eventually leave and become a gas again. This is also similar to um, hydro powered cars. So cars that can use hydrogen as a fuel source need some sort of catalyst in order to uh, produce, you know, energy. And typically that's platinum. And so you have a solid surface that helps break apart hydrogen molecules into individual atoms, and then that can help the process along. Now, there's also catalysts present within our bodies called enzymes. Now, many of the biological molecules that are present in our systems are really large and complex. Um, so most biological reactions require a catalyst in order to proceed at a reasonable rate. So protein molecules that catalyze biological reactions are called enzymes. And enzymes work by adsorbing the substrate reactant onto what's called an active site. And that's going to orient the reactant or substrate for the reaction. So there's kind of two 
elementary steps here. In step one, we have our enzyme and substrate, also known as the reactant. And that's going to form what's called an enzyme substrate complex. So we have a little bond there between them. And then in step two, that enzyme substrate complex will break apart into the original enzyme and our product. So for instance, there is um, an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase and that helps to break down alcohol in our bodies. Um, but if you lack that particular enzyme, the breakdown of alcohol can be really slow and that can actually make you turn red. Um, it can make you feel kind of sick. Um, so essentially you're kind of intolerant to alcohol if you lack the alcohol dehydrogenase uh, enzyme. So here's a nice little picture showing how enzymes work. So we have our enzyme and our substrate, which is in purple. And the substrate will kind of lock into place. So sometimes we call this the lock and key model where the substrate fits perfectly into the enzyme. So it's shaped perfectly there. And then eventually a reaction occurs between the uh, enzyme and the substrate or the enzyme helps the substrate react. And we get our products at the end and then they're released from the enzyme. And then the enzyme can be used again for another substrate. And here's a real life example. Um, sucrose can be broken down into glucose and fructose using the sucrase enzyme. So the sucrase enzyme will grab onto sucrose and uh, when the enzyme grabs onto sucrose, the bond right here becomes weaker. So the enzyme is essentially breaking up the sucrose molecule into two pieces. And those two pieces end up as glucose and fructose. So these are just a few examples of catalysts. And again, catalysts uh, are typically positive, but like we saw with the breakdown of ozone, they can also be negative. Um, in chemistry, we often use catalysts to help speed up a reaction um, so that we're not waiting like 12 hours for a reaction to occur. So that's the last part of chapter 14. Um, next week, we'll start chapter let's see, 18, and I will see you then.